What if you had an assistant who worked 24 seven, never got tired and could adapt to your exact learning style? Hey there, I'm Jeremiah Minner, an instructor at Dion Training. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're studying for an IT certification like CompTIA Security Plus, Network Plus, AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, or even Cisco's CCNA. And if your experience is anything like mine was, you're probably drowning in resources, notes, and questions. You might even struggle with where to even begin your studies or how to look for answers online. Well, what if you had an assistant who worked 24 seven, never got tired, and could adapt to your exact learning style? That's ChatGPT. In this three-part series, we're going to talk about how to use ChatGPT to efficiently help you study smarter and get better results. Today, in part one of the series, we're going to talk about prompt engineering. Prompt engineering will help you get the best, most targeted results from ChatGPT and similar AI tools. Before we begin, I should tell you that when large language models first started coming out, I was not a believer. Even though I am very familiar with artificial intelligence, I just couldn't wrap my head around how large language models could be more efficient and correct than just Googling the answer. So one of the first contracts I got within a few months of ChatGPT becoming public was to review technical content written by large language models for technical correctness. And while I certainly found errors, I started seeing patterns in what questions were asked of the LLM or large language model and how accurately it answered. Through that process, I gradually realized that if I asked the right questions with the correct amount of knowledge about the topic, so I could recognize if the answer was way off, then I could get a pretty good answer. That's prompt engineering, asking the right questions the right way to get the right answers. Now, there are a bunch of large language models. Gemini by Google DeepMind, Claude by Entropic, Grok by XAI, and Llama by Meta. What we are going to talk about, for the most part, works across the board. But for this series, we're going to stick with ChatGPT just to keep things simple and consistent. So, prompt engineering is just the fancy term we use for how to ask an AI a question. And trust me, how you ask makes all the difference. In your studies, you are likely to have specific questions. So, when working with ChatGPT, ask specific questions. For example, instead of saying, what is subnetting, try, you are a Cisco certified network admin, explaining subnetting to a Network Plus student. Break it down with an analogy and list out all the steps. See what we did there? We gave the IA a role, the role of network admin and an audience, which is our Network Plus student. And then we gave the AI a task to explain something with an analogy and steps. That provides the artificial intelligence context to our question and our expectation for what the answer should be. Now, let's get hands on keyboard. Here's ChatGPT. If you're using it, you've got access to different versions of the GPT-4 family, depending on your plan. Free users currently use GPT-4.0 Mini, which is a lightweight version designed for speed and low resource usage. It's solid for quick study help like simple explanations, but it's not as strong when it comes to deep reasoning or long technical conversations. Then there's GPT-40-01, often referred to simply as ChatGPT-40. This is the main model for ChatGPT Plus users. It's smarter, faster, and can handle longer context. It even supports voice, image, and file input and is great for breaking down complex topics, generating quizzes, and building structured study guides. You might also hear about GPT-4.5, which was an earlier premium model. It's now mostly phased out, but it helped bridge the gap between GPT-4 and GPT-4.0. And finally, GPT-4.0, the full version, is currently OpenAI's newest flagship model and is the most advanced and balanced model in terms of speed, accuracy, and multimodal features. But regardless of which version you're using, one rule stays the same. Don't share sensitive info. These models aren't private. So avoid posting proprietary code, personal data, or anything confidential. 
Treat ChatGPT like a public forum. Ask smart, specific questions and keep your content clean and safe. Let's try this out, focusing on one of the most important topics in CompTIA's cybersecurity and networking courses, ports and protocol. I'm going to start out with just the question that's in my head. Tell me about ports. Hmm. This is what I would call a weak prompt. It's super vague. Are we talking about physical ports, network ports, serial ports? As you can see here, ChatGPT is, is just guessing. And it might give us a halfway decent answer, but it's certainly not focused. And when you're studying for a certification exam like Network Plus or Security Plus, you don't want a halfway vague, halfway guessed answer. You want laser-focused answers that match your exam objectives. So let's try this question again, adding a bit more context. Explain what ports are in the context of the OSI model for the CompTIA Network Plus exam. Hmm. That looks better already. Here, we've added scope, Network Plus, and we've told ChatGPT to relate our answer to the OSI model. So now we're not just asking what are ports, we're asking where do they fit in and why they matter. Our answer is getting better, but I love examples. They help me understand how things work. So let's ask ChatGPT to give us some examples. Give me examples of common TCP and UDP ports I need to know for Network Plus and explain what each one is used for. We see port 21, port 20, port 22, port 23, port 25. These are great. This is pretty good. Now we're guiding the model to focus on exactly what we need for the exam. Protocols, port numbers, and maybe even some use cases. Our output is still conversational, but it's more precise now. But what if the concept of TCP and UDP just doesn't sit right with me? Let's ask for some comparison points to help us keep them straight in our mind. Okay, ChatGPT, what's the difference between TCP and UDP ports? And why would you choose one over the other in a real network environment? Key differences between TCP and UDP. Connection-oriented versus connectionless. That's perfect. This prompt invites ChatGPT to make a comparison, which helps us understand not just the definitions, but decision-making. And if you're studying for a certification like Network Plus, that deeper understanding is what sets you apart. Let's keep looking through this. We've got use cases, why to choose one over the other. This is great, and how it relates to a real network environment. Still a lot of information, but it's much more focused on what we're looking for. All right. Finally, I want to see this concept in action. So let's provide some context and ask for a use case. Let's tell ChatGPT that you are a Network Plus instructor, helping a student understand why DNS uses both TCP and UDP. Break it down clearly. Here, we're not just asking what DNS does, we're asking why it behaves the way it does in different situations. We've added a role, telling ChatGPT that they are a Network Plus instructor. A task, help a student understand why DNS uses both TCP and UDP. And in that, we defined a specific protocol that we want to explore. Let's take a look. Primary use of UDP in DNS, why it works well for DNS, and then a discussion about TCP, and then we summarize it up and give a quick recap. As you can see, that level of clarity, adding a role, a task, and a specific protocol to explore gave us a much better answer. That's awesome. So the key takeaway here is this. When you are working with ChatGPT, how you ask your question determines how helpful the answer will be. Narrow the scope. Be clear about what you want to learn. And don't be afraid to guide the model with a little extra context. Prompt engineering isn't about being fancy, it's about being specific. Here are a few context-based prompt engineering templates you can start using today to help you study smarter and get better results. You are a certification instructor. Explain a topic to a student who's just starting out. 
Next, break down this concept in the context of the OSI model for Network Plus. Next, compare Term 1 and Term 2 from the perspective of a security analyst preparing for Security Plus. Next, explain why this protocol or concept is used in this real-world scenario, assuming I've only been studying IT for a few weeks. Next, describe how this technology works at a high level and then explain how it's tested on this particular certification exam. Next, walk me through this process or tool step-by-step step, like I'm new to this and highlight any common mistakes that students make. All right. That's part one of our series. Start experimenting with different ways to frame your questions, and you'll see how much more useful ChatGPT becomes. In part two, we're tackling a big concept, how to avoid getting wrong or made-up answers from ChatGPT. Then, in part three, we'll do some fun stuff like creating actual study products that help you retain what you learn. I'm talking quizzes, flashcards, labs, and even slideshows. See you there.